Today I fucked up by unpairing my girlfriend's earphones from her phone. To tell you honestly, my girlfriend isn't the most tech savvy out there. She's just used to opening up the case and have it paired to the phone automatically. One day I had to update some firmware for her earphones and since I have the same brand I figured it would be easier to pair it on my phone and update it from there because she was still using her phone at the time. The next day she had to work and grabbed the earphones asking me if they're good to go and I said, yeah they are, she caught the fully packed bus and was able to sit down to start listening to her gospel, Christian rock music. By now I think everyone knows where this is going. She put on the earphones, started playing music and was wondering why the volume was a bit low and a bit, muffled. She decided to pump the volume all the way up and leave it there and sort it out when she gets home. When she got to work, she was about to put it back to the case when SHS realized after pulling out one earpiece that the phone was playing music from the phone speaker. Rest assured she was letting me have an ear full of what, I did, and the embarrassment she felt. The watermelon I had for lunch did not compare to how red she was. We could not stop laughing about it that night and I made sure to pair it right there and then. To the people on the bus that day. I'm so sorry about your commute and Jesus loves you. Too long did not read. Girlfriend played music on loudspeaker whilst on the bus. I was expecting a lot worse from this. Luckily she didn't watch porn. The worst part about all this is subjecting those poor people to the music. How does one not notice the sounds not coming from the earbuds? Does she have a hearing condition? I do know someone did this with their text speech app reading porn, a, b, o fanfic, on a bus. Lots of anal apparently. She never took that bus again. When I read Christian Rock I knew this would be pretty vanilla. God I'd rather get caught watching porn. Did Ned Flanders write a tifu? Today I fucked up by telling my kids I went to the butt doctor. Today I, 34M, had an appointment with the proctologist. Afterwards my wife, 33F, drove me back to work, then came to pick me later at the end of the day with our kids, 7F, 5M, and 3M. On the drive home I turned to my wife and jokingly asked, should I tell the kids I went to the butt doctor today? Much to my surprise she laughed and said, yes. I then said to the kids and asked, do y'all know where daddy went today? Knowing that I go to work after dropping them off at school in the mornings, they all responded with some form of me going to work. I responded, no, then proceeded to say, I went to the butt doctor. Exclamation mark quote. They broke out laughing, and of course didn't believe there was such a thing as a butt doctor. Our daughter asked my wife, mom, did dad really go to the butt doctor, to which she replied, yes, he did. And do your kids know what the butt doctor did? Before any of them could answer my wife replied, he looked at daddy's butthole. Our five-year-old son bursts out laughing, our three-year-old son begins silly screaming all followed by our seven-year-old daughter screaming, stop it mom. I'm going to have nightmares. Exclamation mark quote. My wife and I could not control our laughter at this response. She got upset, telling us to stop laughing, and after a few seconds we were able to contain ourselves, and continued on our way home. Too long did not read. I told our kids I went to the butt doctor, proctologist, and my daughter is going to have nightmares. This is so wholesome. Wait till your vasectomy. I told my kids this. Now they just say, daddy is desexed. I think it's more your wife's foo for pushing the joke a little too far. Just wait until they go to school and tell all their friends and teachers that dad shows people his butthole. I was waiting for there to be something like. I got out of the car and my kid yells out the window, daddy don't let anyone look at your butthole. It sounds like she was the butt of the joke. Waiting for the update after they went to school. Brilliant. We explained colon cancer to my four-year-old as, granddad going to get a giant spot taken off his bumhole. It made us all laugh about a horrific situation and made everyone feel better ink my dad. 100% you did not fuck up. I am not really into bathroom jokes generally, but my GF's gyno was named, Dr. Butt, and I still got one two hours of laughter over a multi-year period because of that wonderful woman. Tifu by not trusting Dr. Google the one time it mattered. This happened last year but is still relevant. Last year around August, I came in from work, sat down, and started eating. I got finished, stood up, and got a cramp in my stomach. I thought it was odd, and to be honest, I didn't think much of it. I threw away my trash and played some video games. The next day I felt odd and crampy in my stomach, but I blew it off by thinking, I just had too much greasy food the night before. I proceeded to work, and throughout the day, it kept cramping. I went home, took a tum and played some more games. 
Later that week, the cramping subsided for a day, and I let one rip, and I felt better, but it came back the next day, but this time I felt nauseated. What I ended up doing was googling what could cause it. Everything popped up, from food poisoning to indigestion to GERD. Okay, cool, it's probably indigestion. As the week went on, I started to feel more nauseated, and the cramping continued, and it lasted until Saturday. When I got up Saturday, I felt fine again. So I went to the gun range. I ran some drills, shot kneeling, prone, etc. The entire time, I felt fine-ish. I left the range after being there for four hours and went home. When I got home, I felt off and didn't feel good. So I laid down on my floor and curled up slightly into a ball. Now mind you, I only do that when I don't feel well. I hop back on Google to get some answers. By this time, I paired it with an app called Symptomate. Every test, I took kept pushing out either hernia, appendicitis, or GERD. Appendicitis was always the first option. I did some more digging, and those with appendicitis can't pass gas, poop, walk, or anything without being in excruciating pain. Even some of the threads I found mentioned the same, but I wasn't in pain. I just had a cramping feeling and malaise. I figured if I didn't feel well come Monday, I'd get tested for COVID just in case. Monday hits I feel like shit, and I take my temp. 99.8 F, I figured, yep, I need to go get tested pronto. I book an appointment, go to my nearest clinic, I arrive, and I sit in my car and debate should I get tested or get the cramp checked out. If I do the test first, I have to wait until my results are back before they check the cramp out, and if they check the cramp first I risk exposing the nurses if I'm sick. I debated for a while, and I had a nagging feeling to get the cramp checked just in case it's serious. I walk in, check in, and tell them what's happening. The nurses does an ultrasound, and nothing shows up, they have me lay down on a table, and the nurse pushes on the lower right portion of my stomach. Biggest mistake ever. It felt like my soul was about to leave my body with how much pain shot through me. The nurse looks at me and goes, the ultrasound didn't show anything, but from your reaction, I'm suspecting something serious is going. I need you to go to the ER like now. The NP writes me an order for a stat ab CT scan. I drive to my ER, and the entire time I feel bad. I feel nauseated now, I'm hot, and I just wanted to lay down. I called my mom to tell her what was going on and which hospital I was driving to. I get to the ER, get checked in, and after waiting 30 minutes, I get taken into a back room. I was given some horrible tasting contrast to drink and told to wait. As I'm sitting there waiting, not feeling good, I look down the hall, and I swear I saw my grandmother walking down the hall toward me, which is odd because my grandmother passed away over four years ago. I blinked, and I noticed it wasn't her but my mom coming to see if I was alright. We sit in the waiting room together, and finally, a nurse comes out to take me to get scanned. I go in, get scanned, come out and wait some more. Five minutes go by, and the nurse comes in and goes, Mr. Saul underscore city, you have acute appendicitis, and we need to prep you for surgery now. Of all the things I was expecting to hear, I was not expecting that. So I'm taken into another room and where I change out into a gown and wait some more. A few nurses come in and connect me to fours and such, and as we are talking, the nurse asks, from a scale from one to ten, how much pain are you in? I tell her, 3, she stops and looks at me as if I was lying. I tell her I feel a cramping sensation, but that's it. Other than that, my pain isn't that bad. After the nurse leaves, I'd say another 30 minutes pass, the surgeon walks in and explains to me what appendicitis is and what it does. He tells me he I could be given antibiotics and sent home of that's what I want or I can opt for surgery. He informs me that the antibiotics may not work and I could end up back in the ER. I opt for surgery and he tells me that he will perform something called a laparoscopic appendectomy. After an hour of waiting I'm wheeled off to the OR, sedated and cut open. I open my eyes, and I'm in the Redditor L recovery. My family calls me on the phone, I have zero memory of talking on a phone, and I take one blink, and I'm now in a normal room. While I was there I didn't sleep well because of the nurses coming in to check my vitals a lot. And since it was my first ever hospital stay I didn't know what to expect. I did find it weird how a few nurses kept checking the incision sites. I know they are just doing their job but it was still weird and awkward for me since not only do I not have undergarments on but just being in a hospital as a patient in general is foreign to me. After two or so, I was sent home with some meds and instructions on what to do. I recovered well and now have three cool scars. TLDR, 
Dr. Google said I had appendicitis, which was for five days, and didn't believe it. Almost died. In med school we all learned about right lower quadrant pain, McBurney's point tenderness, fever, and constipation and then we learned that the classical symptoms and signs are present about a quarter of the time. Most cases are atypical in some respect. Congratulations on choosing to get evaluated and finding yourself in competent hands. I just had an emergency appendectomy two weeks ago, after six months of weight loss, 100 plus LBS, abdominal pain, increasing weakness and fatigue. Two CTs, two MRIs, two scopes and no one could find it. The surgeon said it had already been leaking for months through a small tear, and was within 24 hours of an outright rupture. I'm very lucky to have lived. I hope your recovery is complete and speedy, although it'll probably test your patience no matter how speedy. My only symptom was crying. I woke up in middle of night and was crying. I have chronic illness so I'm always in pain, so small pains I don't feel, plus I have moments of vomiting and diarrhea anyway. But I knew something was up, so called out of hours doctor. In end I got operated on a nearly burst appendix and with a burst ovarian cyst. Surgeon was surprised I wasn't in more pain. Anytime I see a today I fucked up that starts with stomach pains it's either an appendix or a toilet erupted. Glad you're okay. Had something similar happen when I was 19 or 20. They settled on appendicitis and prepped me, etc. After they opened me up they found out it wasn't appendicitis, but a bunch of ruptured blood vessels in my stomach. The stomach push pain was almost as bad as the subarachnoid hemorrhage I got about 10 years later, lol. I have a very similar story with my appendix and it was also my first stay in hospital. I also ignored Dr. Google because of something that happened the day before so I thought the pain was just guilt or something and went to work. Moved around about 200 truck tires and then could take no more. My mom had appendicitis without any of the usual pain, just a fever and hallucinations. She didn't go to the hospital until she passed out in the hallway and her roommate insisted on driving her. That pain when the pressure is relieved, called rebound pain or rebound tenderness, is often a characteristic of appendicitis.